Hello and welcome to Mr Barton's autograph video number 55, which also happens to be the second in our Transformation of Functions trilogy. Now, what I've got on my screen now is exactly how I ended last week's video, so if you're not sure how to get to this stage, please have a look back at video 54 and all will be revealed. What I've got here is a lovely little red curve, which is y equals f of x, and a lovely little blue curve here, which is, as we see at the bottom here, y equals a f of x. Now, if you want to actually label that a bit clearer, if you just give it a click and go for text box, and let's say I love a bit of ice blue, give that a click there, then there's our equation there. y equals a f of x, we've also got the definition of the function there, and we can see that the current value of a is minus 1. And as we looked at last week, if I select the curve and, well I don't even need to select the curve, and get a bit of the constant controller on the go, I can get the students to predict what's going to happen as I increase and decrease the value of a. Now, better than that though, is you don't have to restrict yourself to single functions. So if I just close that constant controller down, give this a little double click, what I'm going to do this time is have a look at two functions for the price of one. So say I do f of x and I plus a, and then after I've done that, I add on b. Now again, it's always important to get your constants right to start off with, otherwise things will move before you or your students have had time to think about it. So I'm going to change my value of a to 0, so nothing's being added on there, and I think I'll also change my value of b to 0. So fingers crossed I should end up with just y equals f of x. Click OK, looking good, and now I can say to the students, OK, I've got y equals uh, f of x, but now if I increase the value of a, what's going to happen? And we can get the scribble tool out and mark on points where we think things are going to go. And if we increase the value of a, is it moving to the right, the left, up, down, flipped, squashed, what's going on? It's moving to the left. And now how about if I increase the value of b, so just use the drop down menu, it moves up and down. So now we can start looking at combinations of transformations of functions, which is quite powerful for the higher level GCSE questions. However, there is a chance that you may not want a boring little quadratic, because in the exams they tend to just have kind of wiggly lines going left, right and centre, and don't worry too much about the equation, it's just about the shape and where points go. So if you want to do that on autograph, here's a nice little trick for you. If you just crack open a new 2D graph page, or just close that constant controller, what you need to do if you want a little wiggly line on the go is just go to point mode. I'm just going to change my snap settings to uh, 0.1 so I can have a bit of flexibility and just pop on a few points wherever you want. I'm just going to go for four points. Uh, then go to select mode and just drag around all those points so they're selected. Right click and you get this down here, a best fit option. Now, um, the order of best fit that you can have is always one fewer than the number of points, so I'm restricted to an order of three here because I've got four points. Click OK and it'll fit me a cubic of best fit. Um, now, but what's nice about this is because it's defined by those four points, I can move them around until I get them just where I want them. So I'd love it going through there. I'd love the peak of that to be a little bit higher. I'd love that to change a little bit, maybe to go through minus four and so on. You can get this looking exactly how you want it. Now, this isn't going to be a particularly nice looking uh, equation. In fact, let's have a look what it is. If I click on that and I go to view and I go to status box, there it is there, y equals, oh God, that's horrendous. However, who cares what it is? Because if I go to view and I go to results box, I'll just close that down. There it is there, and if I just go for a little copy of that, so I'm just going to select it all from the y equals onwards. I'm just going to right click and go copy. What I can actually do is click on my function definition, uh, delete that, right click and go paste. So I've pasted that in. Notice I've left the y out of there completely. Click OK. I'm now going to go edit. I'm going to select everything and delete it. So my lovely curve has disappeared. But now if I go to uh, enter equation, if I now go for y equals f of x, what I end up with is my lovely curve that I came up with first. And I don't need to worry about the equation of it. And now I can just do all the transformations that I've done before without needing to worry about a single thing. So if I go for something like f of minus x, that's always one that the students get wrong then I've got it transformed and I don't need to worry about what on earth the equation of it was to begin with. I can just focus on the key points that it passes through. So there is our second in our functions trilogy. One more to go. See you next week. Bye for now.